Hello Pisces, welcome to the channel, this is Asnoitia here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you may have been in a relationship. This could be from the past. For some of you, it could be a current relationship. For others of you, you may be in a situationship, which seems to be quite challenging. And for a small portion of you, this could be a situation where you're with an individual, but you know there's something special there, but no one's really speaking up. We have somebody here who is quite upset and angry, almost. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so they're quite upset at themselves for the things that they've said and done to you and the way things ended up. We have here power, followed by mothering. Then we have challenge, awakening, synthesis, selfhood, anger and rage, betrayal, followed by compassion, under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that I need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Pisces, the connection that I have with you, it is very strong, and I feel that there is a lot of power that you have over me. You don't realize how tempting it is to be in your presence, even from a distance how tempting you are. I also feel that in this connection, there's a part of me that wants to know you more. I have not been able to. I also feel that there's a part of me that feels weak in the knees, emotionally vulnerable, because of certain things that have happened between us in this connection. And because you are so powerful, that makes me feel powerless. I feel you have this way, and I am tempted. In you, I have found this sense of nurturing, loving, caring quality. The loving and protective nature that you have. It makes me realize how much unconditional love exists in you for others. This is something that I did not realize before. I didn't see this before. But now I do. This is a challenge. And I'm not sure why. Certain things have been so difficult. 
There are certain things that have happened, and I find this entire situation to be quite challenging. I can't find a solution to this problem now. I find that this is a riddle that just can't be solved. I also feel that in this connection, you are someone who puts me in a very difficult spot sometimes. And for you, it's easy to get out. But for me, I'm still trying to find the exit. And I've realized something now. I've come to a realization. I've had this awakening moment. I see things differently. I'm starting to finally see things from your perspective. I'm starting, starting to finally see things from your lens. Because I have put myself in your shoes. A long time ago, there was peace and harmony in this connection. And there were certain things that I hid deep down in the shadows of this thick forest. But now I want for that all to be released. And I want to talk about it. I want to be that individual who can share that and who can talk about this, who can reveal more and not shy away, as I once did long ago. I also feel that in this connection there is a sense of selfhood. I feel as if you are someone now who has moved on. I see you now as somebody who is more self-sufficient, self-reliant. You don't need me. You don't need anybody. Because of this, I also see you as someone who's very defensive now, once bitten, twice as shy. You wouldn't have become this had it not been for me, and what you have become is not really that good, because now I've changed you from the person who you were once, trusting, loving, caring, open and honest. Now you have closed yourself up. This could be because of the things that I have done. But I'm not happy with what the results were because that's not what I intended to do. I didn't know that to my actions you would react this way. But I suppose it's human nature to be like this. I did this and you acted like that. You only did what you had to do in order to survive. And I realize now that everything I have done has been wrong. And that's why it's a challenge, because I am so, so angry and upset at myself for the things that I have said and done in this connection. The way I have broken you. The way I destroyed what we had. It doesn't make me feel happy. I'm not even sad. I'm just simply angry. I hate myself for what I did. And what did I do? I betrayed you. I'm angry at myself and irritated by the things that have happened because I've realized that I actually have betrayed you. You thought you knew me, and it turns out that you never really knew me at all. There's a part of me that was very inquisitive, that was very curious. But curiosity, curiosity does kill the cat, and that is what happened here. I went too far. You thought you could predict me, and you thought you knew me. But then, it turns out that you never really knew me at all. Everything that has happened now, 
it appears that I have lost that faith that we had once and that trust is gone. You have lost that in me and I don't know what to do about it. I can't fix it. All I can do is just keep brewing over here and just keep getting angry and just bubbling over. That's it. I don't know how to move forward after what I've done. And that's the part that's very challenging for me. A long time ago, I could approach you because I I knew you. But now things have changed. You have matured. You've grown wiser. And you are no longer the exact same that I once knew. And so it's hard for me to be with you, to reach out to you, to even approach you. I don't know how to approach you anymore. I feel intimidated. I also feel that there is truly a whole lot of compassion on the inside in my heart for you. I feel compassion. There's empathy, sympathy, and sometimes even pity. Why would you even want to be with someone like me? But I realize now this was all my fault. All the things that I have said and done, my actions, the things that I should have said that I never did, the things that I never did that I should have done, all of that makes me realize that you have been through a lot of struggle. And this struggle that has occurred it really has made things different for me. I feel that in this life right now, I need to make things right. The problem is I just don't know how. All right, Pisces. It's huge. Something big happened here. And I don't even see that sense of sorrow. I just feel that this person just skipped from that sense of realization to just quick anger. They're just angry at themselves for the things that they've done to you. And they know, they're aware that they have betrayed you. And that's why it's so challenging for them. And they've realized now that they have betrayed you, that this is how you view the situation. Before they didn't realize that. Before they thought in a different way. But now all of a sudden, they've realized that, wow, I have betrayed Pisces. And that anger part really makes it a challenging situation. Also, they're upset at the fact that you are no longer that individual they can approach easily before they could approach you, before they thought they knew you. However, things have changed. Things are different. It's not what it used to be. All right. I have here the Lover's Path Tarot. So this deck I like to have a look at to see what happened in the past. So with this I go a little bit into the past. Things were beautiful once upon a time, but then something happened. In the sweet connection, something just went downhill, went all sour. What was that? So hopefully this will provide us with some understanding. This is for those of you who wanted some clarity, but never really got any. Somebody may have ghosted someone here. There's a lack of communication. The person just faded. So what happened? This is in the reverse. I read this in the reverse. All that happened before and the current status, that is what we had as the first set of cards. So that's the current status. This is that part that happened in the past. 
that actually caused this to go downhill, whatever happened in this connection. Why it's not as happy, why it's not as productive and as successful as it should be. We have here Ace of Coins followed by the Six of Coins. The Ace of Coins here talks about, and I read this in the reverse, a lack of fertility, a lack of growth, and not really feeling very prosperous. There was a lack of contentment and personal life, and there was the beginning of a new phase that was filled with good fortune and promise, but it seemed like that never came to fruition. This person was unable to attend, and not attend, but they were unable to attain their material goals. Here we have a deep desire to reap the fruits of one's labor, but success seemed to be elusive. Very, very discouraging. So this person had gone through a few things and it just got to the point where they really weren't positive anymore. Very negative. Here we have the six of coins. The six of coins here talks about using wealth to manipulate others and giving with expectations and resenting those who need help. So we have here that sense of a lack of generosity, not really wanting to help others, not really feeling ch feeling charitable. This person was having an issue where they started to use either it was wealth or it could have been anything else. It could have been emotional manipulation, sexual manipulation, um, just mental manipulation, but whatever it was, there was some type of a manipulation that took place here. And they were giving in this connection and in return, they were expecting things. So when you're in a relationship and if it's all related to love, usually the feeling is of selflessness. You just selflessly give. But here, this person was giving with expectations. They were expecting something in return. They also had a little bit of an issue where they were resenting and they resented people who needed help. They were a little stingy. I see that here. They were a little stingy. They weren't really wanting to share what they had. I also see here wealth in a sense where it's just them. They don't want to share their wealth with anybody. They don't want to grow with anybody. This person may have been very stingy. This person may have had someone sign a prenuptial agreement, which is fine in some cases, and that's not stingy because it depends on what the other person's point of view is. Um, but I do see money-related issues here. There's money, there's coins, so it's in the opposite. So it does appear here that somehow um, abundance and money and materialistic gain or just settling down commitment, that was an issue. And it was an issue because whatever plans they had, it did not turn out the way that they thought. They had an opinion, an idea of the way a direction should be. That direction, it did not come um, to fruition the way they wanted it to be. And then everything just went along with that. They just felt that no matter what they do, it's not enough. It's not good enough. Nothing's going to happen. They felt very pessimistic about the whole situation. All right, I have here, let's see, this is the Beginner's Tarot. Now, with the Beginner's Tarot, I like to have a look at any actions, any plans, any intentions your person of interest may have towards you. All right. Interesting. We have here the Page of Swords. So this does talk about, first card is the strongest, it does talk about how this person views this situation as somebody who truly has lost confidence. They feel insecure. They don't have a lot of confidence. There's not a whole lot of self-esteem. But they are interested in you and they're looking at you from a distance. They want to know what you're doing. What are you up to? Who are you with these days? Who are you around? Um, so this is something that does appear to be a problem. It does appear that we have a lot of passion 
However, there's hesitation when it comes to reaching out and actually being with the other person. We have here with this card, it could be online stalking, could be somebody checking out your social media profile, what you're up to. But if it's not that, they also, um, if you don't have social media, not everybody does, they could literally just be asking friends, family, the teller, the grocer, anybody, what are you up to these days? Have you seen so and so? So there is this curiosity, but there is a lack of courage to come forward and to talk. Why do they feel so bound? Here we have the devil card. They do feel sexually addicted to you. They feel a whole lot of lust, a whole lot of passion. It is a very strong connection, even spiritually. And here there's a fear of being together, but there's also a fear of being apart. <clears throat> so it's hard to be together. It's hard to be apart. And every time someone here tries to not think about the other individual, something happens and they are always reminded and this is the devil taking that torch, lighting that tail on fire, just a reminder. Psst. And okay, it's a constant reminder. It's hard for both of you to be with each other, but it's also hard for you to stay away. We also have here the Eight of Swords. So with the Eight of Swords, it does talk about how in this connection, your person of interest may not appear like this, but they are very bound. Here we have a sense of this individual being bound, their eyes, it's all closed, their ears, so there's a blindfold, they can't see, they can't hear, they can't move anywhere, they can't move forwards, backwards, left or right, because their arms, hands, feet, legs are tied. So there's this lack of movement, not being able to move forward because they have been deliberately, they're being held. Now, they're also surrounded by swords. So they're also feeling caged. Far into the distance here, you could see there's a hawk or there's actually probably an eagle or a falcon or something looking. But I like to say that it's a hawk looking at this person from far away. Somebody's here is watching the other person like a hawk and they feel restricted. They feel neglected by, by everybody, but they feel that they do not have a way out of the situation. They feel trapped. They feel victimized. They feel that they need to move forward in life, but they are stuck. They don't like that because it doesn't make them feel very healthy. We also have here the Seven of Swords. So this does talk about how in this connection we have the feeling of being that individual who can do things in a sneaky way, very sneaky behavior. Now with the sneaky behavior, it is how this individual wants to get away with something that they're not really supposed to get away with, but they feel that there's certain things in this connection that they know about. They also know that there's certain things that are not supposed to be going on, not supposed to happen, but they still want it to happen anyway. This is like a forbidden love or forbidden connection. And one of you is restricted and the other is trying to break through those restrictions in a very sneaky way. This is almost like I'm seeing, um, this, this is just an example. I'm seeing kind of like a Romeo Juliet situation, but the, the ending is not like that. But what I'm seeing, at least the scene that I'm seeing right now is a, a female behind this window, but the window actually has bars. So there's no glass, but there's bars behind it. So she is there and she has uh, these restrictions, she's not allowed to go. And there's a gentleman, kind of like a, a prince situation, and he's trying to somehow get in there so that she can be released. Now, he's not going from the outside. He's going from inside of the castle, all the way around, you know, pushing aside those other guards and all that, and then finally escaping with this princess that's inside. 
Now, it wasn't a princess. I don't even know who she is, but it doesn't look like a princess, but I'm just saying it might be. Um, but what I'm seeing is a woman that's not wearing a crown and a, a man who's just like, I don't know, 1400s attire, um, European. But I'm seeing that. This could actually be somebody's past life that I'm looking into right now all of a sudden. Um, but this is what I'm seeing. This is the example that there's a restriction on somebody. And if someone here is metaphorically escaping, it's not going to be direct escaping. It's going to be an indirect way of taking them out of that situation. So you see how that, that knight in shining armor, that guy, he goes and helps the lady. He's not doing it directly from the window. He's not like taking something and pulling the window down. No, he's going inside sneakily to somehow convince people, to somehow beat up some people here and there. Now, this is just metaphorically speaking. And finally, he gets the girl, and then they're out. Now, the problem is, that is still considered a forbidden connection. There is something going on here, Pisces, where there is some clever behavior behind the scenes. There is a lot of lust. There is restrictions about this. There's some type of toxic behavior and somebody here has been deliberately told to stay away from somebody. This could be, for example, an office romance. No, you're not allowed to date that person in the other cubicle. <laughs> or it's a rival company. No, you can't be dating the other people from the other firm. Things like that. Or your parents said no and you're still trying to meet with that person. Or somebody here is in a long-term committed connection, and there is an affair. And that is a forbidden love where somebody here feels caged. They want to break free. And somebody else here is trying to help them break free. There's a few scenarios, guys. So take it as it resonates. Bottom line is... Yes, the person is wanting to reach out to you, but they lack that confidence. Why do they want to do this? Because they feel an overwhelming desire for you. This is almost like sexual obsession, but it's not just about that. It's also the fact that there's a feeling of this spiritual connection that they cannot let go of. Even if they tried to cut the cord, it would not work. And cutting the cord is kind of like taking scissors to the air and trying to see if you can cut the Wi-Fi connection. It's just like that. It's very difficult to cut any type of cord that we call it. Those cords cannot be cut physically. And they are very hard to cut emotionally. And they cannot be cut spiritually either. It is a lesson that needs to be learned. That's your soul's goal. The reason why I came to planet Earth. To be in this type of situation, even though you thought it wouldn't be. But not everything happens as we plan when we come to planet Earth, because we do have negative energies. We do have calamities, disasters, things that were not really written. But these things are all because of negative energies that come in and written, when they kind of ruin our book of life, and then has to be rewritten again, edited, my celestial being. So we have certain things in our life that are owed to us karmically, certain things that are supposed to happen. Not all the time, Pisces, do they happen. Many times people blame the higher being. We blame God, some of us that believe in God. We blame God that, oh, why did God do this? Why have do I have this miserable life? Not all of that was written. Part of it? is because negative energies have taken over. And as they get like stronger and stronger, they end up making an individual feel this way. And they get put into this situation. So not all the time are we responsible for it. Negative energies are also responsible for it. And not all the time do our plans work out. So if it doesn't work out, there's always a plan B, C, D. There's always a backup plan. So nothing does ever stay the same. It will change. Happiness nor sadness, nothing stays. Okay, it's always in a flux. It's always moving. But here I do see a bit of sadness 
where somebody feels like they need to escape. And the only way of escaping is by doing something that their friends or family or society doesn't really allow them to do. And this could be people that are just restricting you, like your family members or your friends saying, no, you shouldn't go out with this person. And yet somebody here is still going to try. We also have here this beautiful card, Queen of Pentacles. With the Queen of Pentacles, it definitely talks about how this person views you as somebody who has a lot of potential. Remember, you had a lot of coins before. So they do feel that you have potential to help. You have potential to grow. There's this nurturing, caring quality that they see in you and the sense of promise materialistically too that you are always going to be that person who is abundant but also work hard. Now, do I see a whole lot of love here? No. Would I recommend that you go out with this person? No. Clearly, bluntly, I will say it. I don't see a lot of progress from this individual as a human being. Not yet. If they're stuck, then they're stuck. But what they need to do is release themselves from that. And at least we need some sort of cards here that show emotion, love, affection. Right now, the main focus I'm seeing is more on money, materialistic gain, and restriction and secrecy. We don't want that. You want you don't want a relationship that is based on lies, right? Maybe a couple of white lies here and there where the both of you are aware of it. That's fine. But what I'm seeing here is a whole lot of struggle and it seems to almost be one-sided. It's a very odd type of situation that I'm seeing you guys are in right now. It's not, um, I don't see a whole lot of passion and love, like unconditional love like passion it's it's not it's not there as much as it should be we do have that sense of compassion that this person has towards you because they they hurt you they did betray you you do have i mean you know the anger and rage card right so this person is quite upset for what they've done but is there regret is there the hermit card that came up afterwards is there any wisdom that comes from this is there any strength or courage that they gained from this no we did not get any of those cards so that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It may mean that in the next few weeks or so or months it might happen. Because like I said, nothing stays the same. Things are going to change. For now, I would recommend that you just kind of stay put. You do your own thing. Let this person kind of leave that mindset of being that page. Because they have to. They can't be a page if they're going to approach you. All right. Just going to do a quick prayer. All right, we have here in the near future, followed by compromise, perfect timing. Then we have wait. Trust. Followed by opportunity. After that, we have listen to your intuition. And then we have big, happy changes. So here these messages are from Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. We have here, in the near future, there is going to be a compromise. Excellent. Excellent. So there's going to be a compromise. Now remember, compromise is when two people are adjusting a little bit. They let go of a few things. They accommodate each other, and then they meet in the middle. So this has to be a two-sided situation. It can't be one-sided, right? 
before it seems to have been out of balance. Now there's a balance that is needed in order for things to move forward in a healthy way in this connection. If you want this connection to work, Crosswatcher, even Pisces, a compromise is needed. So in the near future, there's going to be a compromise that's going to take place. And this will happen in perfect timing when it's supposed to happen. So they do say in the near future, that is the foundation is going to start, okay? But the actual act or the actual um, moment when this is going to happen is not going to happen anytime soon. They are telling here uh, you to wait because it will happen in divine timing when the time is right. But do trust in the divine. This is the source. You can meditate or pray on the source. This is who we call the Almighty God, the Holy White Light of God. And we have here opportunity. In perfect timing, there is going to be an opportunity um, that's going to be taking place. This opportunity could also be abundant related because you had a lot of money and coin there. We also have here opportunity with coins uh, falling from the heavens. So this could also be that you have perfect timing in terms of compromise that is two people in a relationship, but also an opportunity that's going to take place. When that opportunity comes, they are saying here to take action. So an opportunity comes. Do take action. Do not ignore an opportunity. You don't know until you try. So give it a shot. So we have here, take action and listen to your intuition. Listen to your gut feeling. Listen to what your heart tells you and your experiences that you've gone through. That will guide you and keep you on the right track. The overall arching theme is gorgeous, big, happy changes. So there's going to be changes. They're going to be big and you're going to be happy about it. It's a perfect situation. Okay, so I do see things are going to turn out good for you. However, and you remember this is a general love reading, so it's not going to resonate for everybody, but there is this sense of having this compromise and needing for things to come together, but from two people. And we also have here the happy changes. There's going to be big happy changes. So this is really good because because it's under the bottom of the deck, it's the overall arching theme. It does, it should eventually resonate for all of you. Anything that is happening in the end, it usually is for the best. Why? Because you've made it that far, right? You've been there, done that. You've experienced it. You're wiser. So there's not a whole lot of mistakes we make. The mistakes we make are experiences. And if you learn from those experiences, you'll know, okay, I'm going to avoid that next time. I'm not going to do that again. And that's how you end up in that level of perfection, perfection, perfection. Because once you reach that level, you will know what you want, how you want it, when you want it. It's important to have that. It's important to note certain things that are happening and definitely listening to your intuition. Let's try to pay attention to what we have to say and not what others are telling us, especially if one of you here is feeling very restricted from what is going on around you. It's as if somebody here has their hands tied. They just can't do anything because of internal and external circumstances. All right, Pisces, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situations. Do let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. And also, I wanted to mention that I have another channel called Estonia Audio, and that is on YouTube. All of the videos there are absolutely free. Those videos are regarding, it's, it's more of informational videos for what and who, for example, are negative energies. I have some on spiritual connections, twin flames, soulmates, karmic partners, past life type of things. And then I also have uh, some videos on relationships. So certain advice that I've, um, seen patterns and trends over time with all of my 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 viewers, my subscribers, my clients. I've seen what people have gone through and it seems like many people go through the same thing. Love is an international language and everybody goes literally through the same thing. So I created those, seeing what a person feels on the inside and it's multiple times I've seen the same thing. So I decided to create those. And so that is made because of all of you. <laughs> That's made because of you guys. All right, you all take care, stay safe, and I will see you guys again. Bye now.